Hi there, my name is Kenzie. I'm offering a Hatha yoga practice today from the Everyday Counts program space. As you can see, I have no props, but you are welcome to use some. Sometimes it's nice to have a chair nearby, a blanket, some pillows or blocks. This is your practice, your time on the mat. So please not only making suggestions, and you're always welcome to press pause to skip ahead to try a different video. Okay, so let's begin by lying down. Um, you are welcome to lie down somewhere more comfortable than the floor if you'd like to. Uh, you can put a blanket down under you if you need it. Pillows under your knees, maybe under your head. If the legs aren't comfortable along, you're always welcome to keep your knees bent with the feet wide. You could turn your feet in slightly and rest your knees against each other. And that usually makes the low back fairly comfortable. You could turn your palms up with your arms out to your sides or you can even rest your hands somewhere on your body that feels nice. Once you are comfortable, feel free to close your eyes, breathing through your nose if you can, and allow yourself a few moments to simply get comfortable, making any adjustments to increase your comfort And let's begin to draw our attention towards the breath. You might notice the feeling of cool air moving in past your nostrils or past your lips. And warmer air moving out. Feeling that cool breath in. And the warmer breath out. And staying with the sensation of temperature against your nostrils or lips. begin to follow that cool breath in and feel your belly expand. Follow that warm air out and your belly draws back down. Cool breath in, belly expanding. A warmer breath out, belly drawing back down in. Now focusing exclusively on that movement through the abdomen. The inhale expanding. And the exhale drawing back in. Let's see if we can soften and deepen the inhale. And soften and slow down the exhale. The end breath, soft and deep. And the exhale, softer and slower. Now let's simply count five or six more breaths, just like this. Soft and deep inhale. Soft and slow exhale.
here we are now. If it suits you, you might rest a hand to the belly and a hand to the chest. Offer yourself some sweetness here, a kind word, a prayer, an affirmation just for you. Now you're welcome to release your hands to your sides. To go on to stretch, whatever, whatever you need here. And then resting those arms at your sides. Um, and let's all bend our knees and bring feet to the edges of the mat. If you've practiced with me before, you know I'm a big fan of this movement, both knees falling to the right. Back to center and then to the left. We'll do that a few more times. Letting everything be soft. And the next time the knees are upright. Let's walk the feet in and then slowly lift one and then the other. We can bring hands to the knees or shins and we'll rock from side to side. Maybe we'll circle both knees together a little bit. And this could be a tiny circle, it could be growing. Let's change direction. As the knees come back to center. Well, just use the weight of the hands on the legs to bring the knees out to the sides a little bit. And then back together. Now to the sides. And together a couple more times. And the rest of the body nice and relaxed. And as the knees come to center, maybe holding out to the backs of the knees, we can straighten and bend the legs a few times. Maybe the inner edges of the legs and feet touch. You can straighten those legs just as much as, you know, as that sense of stretch is tolerable. It doesn't add more stress. And we'll do that one more time. And we'll keep those legs a little bit straight, just wherever they're comfortable. And you can hold on to the legs or not. We're going to keep the inner edges of the legs and feet touching as we spread the toes wide and slowly begin to flex. So draw those toes closer. Keep those toes spreading as you press the balls of the feet away and then point the toes. We'll do that a few more times. Kind of exaggerating while slowing down that pointing and flexing. And giving our legs a little bit of welcome upside down time. Once more in either direction. And then keeping those edges of the feet and legs touching, let's start to circle from the ankles and they're gonna those feet are not going to stay perfectly stuck. They're going to rub up against each other a bit. And maybe starting to feel some stretch here through the feet. Let's change the direction of the circle. Two more big circles here. All right. And then we can bend the knees. And we're just going to kick those feet a little bit. You can hold on to the legs here if you want to. This is pretty floppy through the feet, through the ankles and calves. You might just kick a little faster or not. This could be very slow kicking if you want it. But let's notice one more slow breath in. 
And then as you exhale, you can hug those knees to the belly. Maybe bring them out to the sides a bit. Maybe there's a bit of a rock here. Great. All right, as the legs come to center, let's put our feet down. We're going to take the feet wide again and then turn the toes in a little bit, rest the knees against each other. So we're letting the legs and lower body be nice and quiet and comfortable. From here, we can bring our arms down by our sides. Some palms are facing down. We're going to get nice and quiet through the back of the rib cage, through the shoulder blades. And now let's shrug the shoulders up towards the ears while keeping those arms on the mat. And now like we're trying to reach our fingertips down towards our heels, let's try to shrug the shoulders away from the ears. Again, we're gonna shrug up, keeping the arms on the mat as much as possible, and then shrug away. We'll do that a couple more times in either direction. Shoulder shrug and then shoulder press. This is also kind of elevation and depression. And then we find a middle place that hopefully feels comfortable. And now we're going to do a similar thing, but with a different range of movements. We're going to reach our arms up if that's comfortable. Fingertips towards the ceiling, palms facing. And now we're going to try to reach for the ceiling a little bit more and you're going to feel the backs of the shoulders lift off the mat. Your head's still on the mat. And now you're going to see if you can press your shoulders down into the mat and your fingertips are going to get closer to you. Again, we're going to reach up for the sky, letting those shoulder blades drift apart, letting the backs of the shoulders come off the mat. And then we're going to do the opposite movement, try to shrug those shoulders into the mat, almost imagine them shrugging together. Let's do that a couple more times in either direction. This retraction and protraction of the scapula, which just means spreading apart and drawing together of the shoulder blades. This can help us find some strength in our shoulders and also release some tension. Once more, reaching for the ceiling and then shrugging those shoulders, shoulder blades together. Wonderful. And then finding that middle place. From here, let's slowly reach one arm overhead until the arm touches the mat and one arm down by your side and they touch. You see if we can kind of stretch here like we're trying to reach those fingertips away from each other. And then we'll bring the arms back up like ships passing in the night, opposite direction. One arm drops to the waist, other arm overhead. We think about reaching them away from each other. And then bring them back up. Let's try that a couple more times. The arms are fairly relaxed as one as they lower in opposite directions, but then once they're down there, maybe they can stretch apart a little bit. Back up to center, other side. And let's meet at the top. Let's take a moment here to give ourselves a hug. So you can cross your arms, you can wrap your arms around yourself. Notice how that feels. And then we'll reach up again and let's wrap ourselves up in this hug, this embrace opposite arm on top. Wrap your arms around yourself. Great. Okay, so now we're gonna find some big arm circles here. I'm reaching my fingertips to the ceiling. I'm gonna make sure there's lots of space around my mat here. I'm gonna slowly float the arms overhead. And as we do this, I want you to notice there's a quiet here through the lower ribs. There's a sense of the back of the ribs resting on the mat. So if those arms don't wanna to touch the floor, it's okay. If they naturally are already in a wider place, that's okay. We're gonna let them make contact with the mat wherever they can. And then we're going to sweep the arms out to the side. So the palms are facing up here, all the way down to your sides. Maybe the palms face in. And then we'll reach them up again. We're thinking about the back ribs and shoulder blades quiet on the mat as we reach those arms overhead to rest wherever they do. 
palms can face up as we sweep the arms around. This reminds me of making sort of snow angel wings, but in only one direction. And again, palms face in, we slowly reach the arms up and overhead. Let's do this two more times in this direction, imagining a nice slide and glide of those shoulder blades, just finding their way to support this movement, both arms moving together. And we'll meet here with the arms at their sides, the palms can face up. And we'll take a couple breaths here, letting the whole body be heavy and quiet. And now we're going to reach the arms out and up. So out to the sides, palms facing up, reaching overhead. And when we're ready, reach the arms up to the ceiling and back down by your waist. We'll do that maybe three more times. Imagine you're trying to reach your fingertips away from you, away from the center of your body. So you're reaching out of those shoulders. There's the reach overhead. You might start to feel this in your abdominals as you keep the back of your body quiet on the mat. A couple more. Reach those fingertips away. Nice, smooth, even movement for both arms. Once more down by your sides, turning the palms to face up. Reach those fingertips away from the center of your body. And one more time, once those arms are reaching overhead, let's give ourselves a hug. There are not enough hugs lately. Sometimes we have to give ourselves those hugs. Squeeze yourself tight. And then really switch arms. Great. Okay, we're going to be back at center, releasing those arms. I want to do a little bit of pelvic tilting here to engage the core, and then just a few movements for the abdominals before we move into some other positions. So with the arms down by your side, see if you can kind of wiggle your fingers under your low back. It's okay if you can't, but just notice there's a little bit of space here. And then you can take your hands out. And now we're going to see if we can get rid of that space. So press the low back down into the mat. The pelvis is going to tilt a bit. And then just see if your fingers get under there now. So notice there's a, a space there. Okay. Hands can be down by our sides now. We're going to do a little bit of pelvic tilting. So as we tilt the pelvis forward, that's making extra space of the low back. As we tilt the pelvis back, that's no space of the low back. Tilting forward, that's where we make space. Tilting back, well, that's where we press the low back into the mat. So let's try that a few more times. Pelvic tilting, there's not much to see, it's subtle, but you're gonna feel it at that space or lack thereof at the low back. Another way to say this for some people is to tilt the tailbone up to the ceiling as we imprint the low back, and then to tilt the tailbone down to the floor as we make space of the low back. So just a couple more times. Feeling that core engage as we imprint the low back, and then feeling that openness to the belly as we arch, and then finding that middle place. Yeah. As a little release here for the low back, let's walk the feet to the edges of the mat. We'll rock the knees from side to side a couple times. It's becoming really soft and relaxed. Okay, final piece here. And we're going to walk the feet hip distance apart, arms down by our sides. Yeah. So let's imprint the low back. That's where we press the low back down into the mat. Keep the low back pressed into the mat and let's slowly lift the right leg to what I call tabletop position. So knee is above the hip, 90 degrees at the knee. We keep the low back imprinted as we put the foot down. Let's relax for a moment. There's a natural space of the low back. And again, let's press the low back into the mat. We're going to lift the other leg. There 
There it is. Low back still pressing down, putting the foot down. Okay. And relax that. There's some space at the low back. And again, we're going to press the low back down into the mat. Keep it pressed. We'll lift the right leg. And then the left leg, low back still pressing into the mat as we put the right foot down. And the left foot down. Again, soft here. Let the low back relax. And again, press the low back down into the mat. And we'll lift the left leg. The right leg, maintain that imprint position. So you put the left foot down and the right foot down and relax. So you can stay with those leg lifts one at a time. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. You can do just what we did before, or you can join me here. We're gonna lift both legs. Yeah, so knees are above the hips. We've got 90 degrees at the knees. We're going to press the low back down into the mat. Another way to say this is tucking or curling the tailbone to the ceiling. We're going to feel the core engage. And then very slowly, keeping the low back pressed, maintaining the 90 degree knee, we're going to tap the right heel, bring it back up, tap the left heel, and back up. Let's do that a few more times. We're going to keep pressing the low back into the mat. Still breathing though. Remember, if we're breathing. Let's do once more either foot. I know this is challenging. It's challenging to keep the low back pressing into the mat. You can feel the strength of your abdominals here. Left foot. All right, and then let's hug the knees to the belly, rock from side to side. Wonderful. So let's roll all the way over to one side and make our way to hands and knees tabletop position. So as you come to your hands and knees, just notice how it feels to be here. If you need more padding under your knees, feel free. If you prefer to be on forearms, that works too. Or even the tops of fists if the hands aren't comfortable flat. We'll begin with hopefully our very familiar cat-cow movement. Just like I mentioned before with the tailbone. We're going to draw the tailbone down and begin to slowly round the spine. That's a bit like imprinting the low back, but then you keep going with it. And then on the inhale, turn the tailbone up. And that would be like a little arch to the low back, and then we're going to arch the whole spine. So leading with the tailbone, there's the tuck under, slow rounding, the squeeze of the belly. We've already felt that today. And then turn the tailbone up, and slow arch. Maybe a shrug of the shoulder blades together. Lots of mobility to find here as we do this a couple more times. Maybe closing your eyes here. Notice how your breath supports this movement. So we'll meet back in our neutral tabletop position. You can shake out one hand, shake out the other. Maybe start to rock the hips from side to side. Maybe turn this into a bit of a circle. Rock to one side, roll back and around to the other side. Circle forward and around. Back. So a circular journey for these hips, two more times in this direction. You want to push the ground away when the weight shifts forward. And then let's change the direction of the circle. Two more times in this direction. Noticing what you feel, where you feel it. 
And as we circle those hips towards the heels this time, let's press into a child pose. You might want to widen the knees as you drop your hips towards your heels. As you walk your arms forward, let's rest the forehead between the arms. Let's find that soft belly breath in. Soft or slower breath out. One more. Great. So we are going to be back in our tabletop position. We'll play a little bit with reaching and twisting here today. And we flirted with this in other practices before. So let's start with our right hand. We're gonna lift the right hand. So just notice how it feels to lift the right hand. And then see if you wanna reach it out to the side. We're gonna press down through that opposite hand as we reach the arm up. Like we're stacking the shoulders. You can follow with the gaze. And then slowly back down. And let's try that on the other side. So if it's the left arm out to the side, I'm just getting used to that. And as we press through the bottom hand, let's reach up through the top hand, follow with the gaze. And then back down. And we've done this from a slightly different position before, and that's what we're gonna try now. So we're in our tabletop position, we're gonna lift the right hand. This time we're going to reach it in front, like we're trying to reach for something in front of us. The palm might be facing in. Let's turn the palm to face out. Press down through the bottom hand, and again, let's return to that lifted arm position. Press down to reach up. We're there again. And again, we're going to bring it back forward, so there's the forward reach. And bring the hand down. Now lift the other hand. I'm going to reach it in front to start. There's our forward reach. Turn the palm out. We're going to sweep it up. Press down to reach up. And forward. And down. I'm going to widen the knees. Press into child pose. If you need to circle the wrists, rock the hips, you're welcome to. One more big breath in and out. Okay, you're turning to our tabletop position. So last little bit here. Let's reach the right leg behind us. We're gonna be on those top toes. I'm gonna to come forward and back a few times. It's gonna point and flex the back foot just a little bit. It's gonna stretch the wrists a little bit. You could do this on forearms instead. You could do this on fists. Great, we'll come to stillness. I'm gonna lift that leg. Lower the leg. Can you imagine that you're imprinting the low back into the mat a little bit? So think about this length of the low back, a sense of drawing the tailbone under or squeezing the belly slightly as you lift the legs. So there's no movement in the low back as you lower the leg. You're gonna feel this core connection to this leg lift. Yeah. Let's lift three more times. And tap the toes. Again, think about that low back staying quiet, drawing the belly in slightly or pubic bone towards navel. And then we'll put the foot down, we'll put the knee down. Let's shake out the hand. We know we need to do this with the other leg. I know this is strong on the hand, so again, forearms are great, fists are fine. Let's reach the opposite leg behind. First, we're on the toes. 
going to push forward and back a few times. Press the floor away with your hands. You will build strength in these hands. And this weight bearing movement does get easier. Okay, so as we come to stillness, again, think about pubic bone towards navel. Think about lengthening the tailbone down under as we lift the leg, lower the leg. You're going to feel that strong hip, that strong glute and hamstring. Legs are heavy. This is a challenging movement. It helps think about sort of squeezing your butt as you lift up. Help shorten those muscles to get the leg lifting. About three more here. Great. We'll lower the knee. Well, let's press into a child pose here. And if you need to, you can circle the wrists. You can rest the forehead, even cross your hands to rest the forehead. And a couple more breaths. Okay, so we're going to take a break from hands and knees for a bit to get that weight off of our hands. We're going to practice this upright seated pose. So this is not comfortable for everyone, and this is a great place where elevating the hips can do a lot. So if you've got a block or a pillow or something firm that you want to sit on, please feel free. The idea is that we can feel the weight on our sitting bones, that we're not rounded back. We're actually feeling like the shoulders are stacked on top of the hips. And feet are about a distance apart. If it helps, you can hold on to the backs of the knees or you can bring your hands down by your side so you can press down into the mat and feel this height. Yeah, you might feel the core engaging. If there's any tightness of the low back, this is going to be an interesting thing that we're going to work up to over time. Yeah. So I want to come back to that idea of reaching. And there's a few different reaches we can do here. So there's the reach overhead, reach. We can try that with the other arm. And again, you notice that one hand by your side, reaching the other arm up. It's not even a side bend. It's just that idea of lengthening the side waist. Let's try that once more either side. And that the challenge here is to stay upright and to not round back into this, but to press into that opposite hand to help you. Yeah. Okay. And then we can come back to that forward reach that brings us into a bit of a twist. Yeah. So we can reach forward out to the side and then behind. And this is where we're going to follow the hand with our gaze. We're going to see if we can find some rotation to the ribs. Sometimes it helps to bring your hand to the opposite knee or even to the legs for traction. We're going to come back. We're going to reach forward. Bring the hand down. Let's try the other one. Reach forward. Sweep behind. Turn to follow. And again, I can use a little pull into the legs for traction. We're back. Let's try that once more either side. Reach forward, out to the side, and now we're going to turn the chest to that side wall, reaching behind, following the hand with your gaze, and then slowly back. Other side, reach forward, reach. into the hands here. Take the feet wide. Again, if you practice with me regularly, you knew we'd be coming to this movement eventually. We're keeping things nice and slow, nice and low today, but focusing on mobility on the core. You're probably noticing that. Uh, 
And so allowing your knees to fall to one side, you're going to lean into that hand, sweep the opposite hand around, keep sweeping the arm around. Let's offer a big breath in here, reach as far as you can behind you. And then reaching those fingertips away from the center of your body as you come back. And let's go into this on the other side. On that inhale, reach a little further. And back. Okay. So now we'll try something a little bit interesting here. Um, we are going to let our knees fall to one side. We're going to lean into that hand. Uh, just notice how it feels to be here. If you want, you can try sitting up a little higher. We're going to reach up. We're going to reach forward. And we're going to continue that twist and rotation. Forward, up. And with this forward and up reach, if you want it, you could press into the back hand and lift onto both knees. Okay, that might feel like too much today, but it's a way to continue that stretch up. Let's slowly lower down. And the hand comes down, the knees shift. So we're leaning into that back hand, or we're sitting on our hips here, we're reaching up. And then forward, and let's follow the hand again. So we're kind of breaking down this movement. And bring the arm back and up. We're going to press into that back hand. Can we lift the hips? Maybe, maybe not, but there it is. Lowering the hips, bringing the hands behind. Are we going to try this once more on either side? We'll just do that lift of the hips. Again, this might not be for everyone, but it's kind of nice to know that there are a few options in these ranges. So if the knees fall to one side, we lean into that hand. Instead of doing the twist, we're going to reach up, we're going to press into the hand, we're going to lift the hips. An extra breath here, stretch and reach. And I want fingertips with the back hand. That helps me find it. The lower down. Bring the hand down. You can shake out that other hand on the way. Once those knees fall to the side, you're getting kind of upright here. You're reaching up as you reach down. Pressing into that bottom hand. We're going to lift the hips. And stretch here. Great. Okay, so final piece here in our seated series is we're going to bring one leg in front, we're going to bend the other knee, we're going to bring the knee out to the side. My knee is quite high, so this is where it might be nice to have a block under that thigh. I'm going to bring my heel kind of towards my groin, but not quite there, just wherever it's comfortable. And I'm going to try to find that upright seat again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is where we could be sitting on a cushion. So we're kind of wiggling side to side to get on those sitting bones. We're going to flex that straight leg foot. I'm going to walk my hands down the leg. But as I do, rather than thinking about bringing my forehead to my big toe, and it's not going to make it, I'm going to think about drawing my belly towards my thigh, like I'm closing like a jackknife. Your, your hands could be on your leg, they could be either side of the leg, walking those fingers forward. And we're probably going to start to feel the stretch into that bent knee hip. Yeah. We're going to see if we can keep the spine fairly long, so I'm not, again, rounding to get my forehead to my toe. I'm closing like a jackknife, drawing belly to thigh. If you want, you can kind of wiggle that bent knee a little bit, just kind of shaking. Just see how there's a little wiggle room here. See if you can walk yourself a little further. One more breath. Okay. 
Okay. Let's slowly come upright. We're gonna switch legs. Let's take a moment, shake out both legs. You can lean into the hips. You can rock the knees here. That's always a great in-between movement. And let's do it again on the other side. So this time it'll be the opposite leg, knee to the side. Again, you can tell my hips are quite, quite tight in this range. So usually I have a little block propped under that leg. I'm flexing the opposite foot. I'm sitting upright on those sitting bones. So if I need to rock a little bit to get there, that's fine. And then maybe my hand is walking down my thigh or either side of my leg. So I wiggle forward, drawing belly towards thighs. Rather than rounding here, I'm keeping a little lift to my heart. Again, pulling belly to thigh, probably starting to notice some tightness in the bent knee hip. So again, you could add a little wiggle here, a little shake, so you can find a little bit of wiggle room. Couple more breaths. Okay. Let's slowly sit up, slowly release that leg. Again, rock the knees. And then we'll kind of put those two leg positions together by bringing the soles of the feet together, drawing heels close to hips. And now it is quite challenging to get on the sitting bones here. Again, elevating the hips can be great. We're going to see rather than rounding, that we can kind of Use the hands, maybe on these ankles or shins, to kind of pull the belly into that space between the thighs. Again, rather than rounding to get here, which does feel pretty juicy for sure. Instead, we're going to root those sitting bones, lift the heart. You can even use the elbows pressing into those inner legs to bring the belly into that space between the thighs. Maybe closing your eyes here as we offer a few breaths. So as we release, we are on our way to lying down again. The feet are wide, knees are bent, we're going to slowly lower down. Again, we can rock the knees. And then once the knees are upright, let's walk the feet about hip distance apart. We'll hug the knees into the belly. A little rock from side to side. I'm going to offer a slight, what I call a yin yoga pose, a slightly longer stretch. Uh, bringing the feet to the mat and bringing those inner edges of the feet to touch and then letting the knees fall out to the sides bringing the soles to touch so similar to that seated pose we just did and then maybe bringing the arms out to the sides around your head so this could be cactus arms like your goddess pose or you could take the hands bring them behind the head like how you relax into your hands like at the beach or on the grass or even reaching for that fleshy part um, between the shoulders and the neck where people sort of massage you most likely if they come up behind you and give you a squeeze. Kind of wrap your fingers and hand around there and then let your elbows come out to the sides. And hopefully you're in kind of a gentle sensation of stretch here. You can soften into this, feeling your belly. Expand on the inhale. And settle on the exhale. 
As we rest here a few more minutes, if you want to add that little bit of exploring wiggle room, if you're just kind of wiggling or shaking through those legs, I like to imagine I'm flapping my butterfly wings. And you could even do the same with the arms if you needed to. I'm going to take flight here. I know it seems a bit silly, but sometimes if you add a little loose movement here, you can release some tension. So a couple more breaths. Just be this little curious butterfly hovering around your mat. One more slow breath in. And then relax. Becoming still. Our final bit here is we're going to give ourselves a little bit more of a shake. So I'm going to sweep the arms down by my sides and guide those knees together. So the knees can stay bent, take the feet wide, turn the toes in, rest the knees together, or you can take the legs long, whatever is comfortable at this point. And then you're going to wiggle your feet forward and back. So it might feel like it's on the heels. If kind of like you're gently pointing and flexing the feet, kind of wiggling the whole body if the legs are long. Or you could bend your knees and kind of shift the soles of the feet forward and back. Or you could even wiggle through your hips or shoulders. Peek at me if you need to. This is a very gentle, hopefully fairly effortless shaking of the whole body. Giving yourself a little jiggle. Again, I'll just kind of cycle through all the different options in case you still haven't found one that works for you. And letting go of what you can. When the whole body starts to gently shake, you're going to feel a little rubbing at the back of your head, at the back of your arms, and through the torso. And again, just keeping it soft and gentle. And wiggling any way you can for a couple more breaths. Let's offer one more slow breath in. And as you exhale, become still and notice how it feels. Like we just shook a snow globe. We're letting everything settle. Noticing how you feel. It is time for final relaxation. So if there are any other poses or stretches or movements you want to do, please feel free to press pause or just keep moving until you're ready to join the relaxation. If you are ready to relax, um, you know, make yourself as comfortable as possible. So if you need to keep the knees bent, rest the knees against each other, if you need a pillow or a blanket, please feel free. Your comfort matters most to this pose. You might bring hands to rest on the belly or chest or abdomen or not. Closing your eyes.
And let's allow a few moments to quiet our body on the floor. Can you feel support beneath you? Trust that you are fully supported so you can let go. Notice where the back of your head touches the floor. Feel the quiet connection wherever your head touches down. Inviting that quiet into the whole head and neck. Feeling the softness of your forehead. Softening all of the muscles around your eyes. Just feel your eyeballs resting in their sockets. Soften your cheeks and your jaw. Imagine you could release the root of your tongue. Now those shoulder blades against the mat, feeling that quiet connection. So you feel the length of your arm, the weight of your hand. Quiet strength of those arms at rest, those giving hands at rest. Noticing now the quiet of your back against the floor. Feel the strength of your spine, the length of your spine, the full support of your torso by the floor. Feeling where the buttocks touches down, the hips, the strength of those hips leading to the length of those legs, the brilliance of your feet, feeling your feet touching down, whether it's the heels or the soles. Feel the length and strength of those legs. Dare I say the quiet majesty of your glorious feet. And now putting it all together so we can dwell in our own wholeness. Where of your feet, of your legs, fully supported, your whole torso fully supported, both arms and giving hands fully supported, your neck, your head, heavy, quiet, Supported. Feeling your whole body fully supported. Even as the breath rolls in and out, 
soft, gentle rhythm. Deep, quiet inhale. That longer, softer exhale. Continuing to let yourself be. Here in this present moment. Soft, deep inhale. Softer, slower exhale. Your whole body quiet. Majestic and supportive. Whole. Feel your whole body, your whole breath. the wholeness of this moment. Let's offer a few more breaths to this pose. suits you once more you can bring a hand to rest to your belly and one to your chest and again offer yourself some sweetness a kind word a prayer and an affirmation just for you those hands. So this is where I'll leave you. Please feel free to relax for as long as you wish when you are ready to move. Maybe it's fingers or toes. A slow turn of your head, a stretch that you want. Eventually rolling over to one side and just taking it slow. Thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, if you have any questions or concerns, always feel free to reach out to us at the Everyday Counts program. Hopefully, I will see you again soon. Bye.